Hey everybody, welcome back to the Sky Lounge here to discuss some Arsenal action. And I know, season's been over for three fucking days, but do want to talk about the season in retrospect. See what the fuck happened. See what the fuck we need to do to move the fuck on, because this has been, quite frankly, fucking embarrassing. So Arsenal, within the 38 games of the Premier League, they had 19 wins. What the fuck was it? Six, 13 losses and six draws. Yeah, that's not how you get top fucking four place in the Premier League, man. That's how you fucking lose and do garbage. 74 goals scored. 51 goals conceded. 13 clean sheets. I'm going to tell you why that goals conceded is such a concerning number. Because out of the top Premier League clubs, Arsenal finished sixth, but... That goal conceded shit. It does. It just does them no justice. So Manchester City had 27 goals uh, allowed. Manchester United 28. Leeville's Tottenham with 36. Liverpool with 38. Chelsea with 38. Burnley with 39. Burnley with 39. And again, I've been saying this all throughout the season that Burnley, they just had that one fucking striker. They'd be good. In the sh- they, they'd be fucking good. So you got Burnley. At 6, Newcastle with 47 goals conceded. And then 8th place is Arsenal. So Arsenal, you know, based on defense, they're they're nowhere near the top 4. Nowhere near play, you know, Premier League title contention. And so we move on to the FA Cup where Arsenal participated in the third round. They lost 4-2 to Nottingham Forest. This was one of the most embarrassing fucking matches I've seen in a long time. You know, donning the Arsenal shirt and supporting the club. No one showed up. You know, and this was the one club, you know, this was the one cup fixture where Arsenal can, you know, be a little boastful. Three cups in five years. That's absolutely incredible. So again, it just comes as a frustrating point uh, with Arsenal where they participated in it, but they fucked up. And then in the League Cup, the Carabao Cup, whatever the fuck you want to call it, in the League Cup, Arsenal went to the final and they lost. 3-0 to Manchester City. That was such a fucking bad beating. I remember being in the pub, just trying to get drunk, but it was just the most miserable shit to watch. Um, City just dismantling that Arsenal Arsenal team. Defense not showing up. Absolutely unbelievable. And then in the Europa League, when we got relegated to the Europa League last season, we thought this easy, easy fixture, easy win. I said, no, 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 no. You got to take that with a grain of salt. You got great clubs in there still. And with Atletico Madrid went down from the Champions League, I thought we're fucked. We're fucked. And sure enough, in the semifinal, we make it to the semifinals, had, had great records coming into the semifinal, and then loses 2-1 on aggregate to Atletico Madrid and there's so many reasons why I'm so upset about that match and I I posted a lot of videos about you know the Atletico match you know with the reviews and shit which was fucking embarrassing to watch Um, and uh, yeah man I I mean that that's that's where we're at right now and here's the thing when we move on to the major transfers ins and outs this this is already another fucking thing that we have to talk about so the outs obviously the big one is Alexis Sanchez in terms of player uh, player transfers, Alexis Sanchez leaving Man- to for Manchester United was a huge fucking deal. Um, you know, obviously changed the dynamic of the club. Obviously changed the you know how how Arsenal's offense went. And so the other the other you know part of offense that we lost was Olivier, Olivier Giroud. You know, you can have your opinions about him, but he was the best bench superstar, and now he's providing that at Chelsea for. 20 million pounds. They, they got him for 20 million pounds. What a fucking steal for us. <laughs> but uh, also Francis Coquelin. Francis Coquelin is another transfer where I said this is a big loss in a way because he's a great utility player. But, you know, we move on from him. And obviously the major, major, major out is Arsene Wenger. So we don't, we don't have a uh, manager at the moment. We're still waiting on that. And it, it, of, of course, the club club's identity was so saturated and surrounded by Arson and you know created by Arson. So it, it's a huge fucking loss uh, for our club and our club's identity. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. I say that we can be optimistic about. We could be a little optimistic about because the out of all the ends. I have to say, Pierre Emerick Aubameyang looks like a stroke of genius. That that transfer for fifty something million pounds, stroke of fucking genius. 
you pay the same amount of money to Alvaro Morata, who is fucking trash. And Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, in his short time since January, has scored 10 Premier League goals. The only club... I, th I think that the League Cup were the only cup competitions he was actually participating in, and he played phenomenally. Alexander Lacazette, I believe he had 15 goals in the Premier League, almost probably over 20 goals in all competitions. So again, Alexander Lacazette, another fantastic acquisition by Arsenal. Uh, great piece of, you know, business moving forward for less than 50 million pounds. Fucking steal. Young guy, too. Him, you know, Obama Yang, and also Henrik Mkhitaryan, another great acquisition from the Alexis Sanchez piece. Now, granted, the trade and the Sanchez deal kind of sucked from an emotional standpoint, but, you know, Henrik Mkhitaryan is a fucking stud. Look what he did in United. And rewind further back to what he did in Borussia Dortmund, and they've been showing you that, Obama Yang and Henrik Mkhitaryan, that deadly duo they could potentially have again. And this is the other guy that nobody really talks about, but this is a huge in a huge optimism for Arsenal moving forward is Sven Mislintet. I'm going to butcher that fucking name until somebody corrects me or I look it up. Probably going to be the latter. But great thing about him, he's been recruiting a lot of players from the Bundesliga. Uh, more specifically, Borussia Dortmund. We're already tied with the names like Socrates. So good Bundesliga talents about to spill in, so I'm very excited for that. So what do we have to do moving forward? Obviously, with, with Sven at the helm, I think, you know, as a as a director of scouting, I think, you know, we, we would have to think that Sven's going to try to toughen up that defense, which which I've been saying for fucking months. We don't have a defense. We haven't had defense to, since 2004. You know, Mustafi is always questionable. Uh, you might have to, you know, fucking relegate him down to a bench roll or something but Koscielny is going to be up for six to nine months so that's going to be an issue long term so you do want to have a kind of hard man no nonsense fucking center back who does the fucking business and hey man spend a little bit of money on the guy spend a little bit of money on good center back here goalkeeping I think is another big issue that we have to fix moving forward Petr Cech and Ospina they are not your answers I think Petr Cech uh Long term, he's not your answer. He's oh, he's over 30. I mean, he, he's not going to get you fucking saves. And Ospina, he can't even reach a fucking goalpost. Um, short guy, unathletic. You know, I, I think the problem with Ospina is that he might have been in Vanger's pockets. Who the fuck knows? So you got to get a star goalkeeper. I think a, a guy like Oblak, um, Leno from the Bundesliga and Leverkusen is another fucking good example. I think young guys who are tall, athletic, you need a goalkeeper like that. And also moving forward, man, I don't know. Just You, you just got to address that fucking defense. I mean, really, other shit, new manager, but that's a given. That's going to happen before the World Cup is going on. So we'll see how everything goes. I know a bit of a long video, but a lot of shit to talk about with Arsenal and the frustration that was this season. But, hey, let's just be positive moving forward. So let me know what you guys think. Comment, subscribe, all that shit. And until next time, fuck off.